Om Shanti. Welcome everyone to the month of May Global Betty. Thanks to those of you joining in live. Really good to see you as always. And also warm greetings to those of you tuning in later on through the YouTube video. These global betties give us a good focus and at any time during the final weekend of the month, what the seniors are asking us to do is just take an hour, take half an hour and have a focused practice of yoga. I'm a great believer in routine. I think routine is so helpful. It's a very important part of a yogi lifestyle. I was talking with one brother this week about that and as he was asking, he was asking my advice on some effort and I could feel just from him that he wasn't there with his routine. And he said, yeah, you're right. And you, and this would be my number one advice to everyone, that the foundation of a yogi lifestyle is a routine. So try and get yourself into firstly an early morning routine. Ideally, you want to get up at 4 a.m and then have some yoga, because Shiv Baba, who was telling us in this last week as well, he remembers all the Brahmins between 2 a.m. and 5 a.m. So if we can get up at that time, we can catch Baba's current, and we, it becomes easier then uh, to absorb his energy. And then between 5 a.m. and 8 a.m., um, your center might have a class or if you're reading the morally yourself, make sure you're catching the morally at that time. So you've got a routine there. And then in the evening, um, either 6.30 to 7, 7 to 7.30, 7 7.30 to 8, have half an hour of meditation at that time. And if you bookend your day, the start and the end of your day with yoga and you've got that as a routine, what you'll find is the middle of the day becomes much more spiritual for you. So you'll find that again and again, thoughts of the morally will come back into your mind. Your mind will go to back to Baba. You might get busy in actions, and then you'll return back to Baba. And then what Baba says is through the day, just take five, you know, take a break, five minutes, take your mind up to Baba, practice a drill, practice going back to the soul. So you'll find a routine. What I tend to do is I pick something of that morning's morally and then I practice that in the day because I feel there's like fresh things that Baba always shares with us. Today, he was talking to us about becoming the angel, uh, the angel, the furishta, the one who is beyond connections, rishta, with this world. And so just thinking and one thing that Baba had said in the Morley once, well, I think it was 1983, 84, and Denny Jenki was in Madhuban, and he had spoken the Morley, and I think he had might have spoken to her. And he said something in that Morley that Brahma Baba used to keep the, his angelic form in front of him and make effort. So he used to visualize this angelic form. And because daddy was in front of Baba when he said this, she took it like as a signal. So I can remember her mentioning this a few times back in the 1990s. And she mentioned it a few times to me personally, because it was an effort she was making. That she, Brahma Baba used to just keep his angelic form in front of him and keep comparing. What, uh, what am I like? And what is this angelic form like? Where do I need to get to? So in today's meditation, we're going to do that. Um, the other part of the meditation that we're going to do is linked with Shiv Baba because we had some advice this week from Brahma Baba on how we have to have yoga. And what Brahma Baba was explaining is that we have to begin to praise Shiv Baba with a sense of wonder. And as we do that, we'll take ourselves into the experience 
of that title, of that praise. And that's how we can develop our love for Shri Baba as well. So the commentary is going to be in two parts. With this, uh, at some point I will do an English interpretation of this. I had watched an experience of one of our deities who's based in Gujarat. And she was a trans messenger uh, right from the early 60s. And she came from one of the mountain areas of India. And she was uneducated. She really said she didn't know anything. Okay, literally, they didn't know anything about anything. But they're that type of person. They're quite straightforward people. Because they don't have any inhibition or any qualms because no one's taught them to have them. And um, she, in the early days, she was in Madhuban. And it was in Baba's hut. So where Baba's hut is there, there was a temporary Baba's hut that was constructed of more flimsy material in the hot season. So Brahma Baba could stay out there when it was hot. And she was there together with senior sister, Bibi Manmahini, Brahma Baba. And I think it was the center teacher, Daddy Rukmani, who was the center teacher in Delhi, where she was based. And so just four of them in Baba's hut. And Brahma Baba asked her to go into trance and go and see in the subtle region and meet Baba in the subtle region. So he was down there and he said, go up. And he said, go and meet my angelic form up there. And tell me what you see. So she went up. Remember, she's a very innocent. She's very new in knowledge. And she just was very innocent anyway. So then she comes back. And Brahma Baba asks, tell me, what did you see? And um, she said, the, Baba, I saw you there. Okay. And was that Baba that you saw there like this Baba? Oh, no, Baba, he was much better than you, much more beautiful than you. So Didi Manmahini, in terms of girl, have some respect here. What are you saying? And then Brandon Baba said, no, don't worry about it. Let us speak. Uh, how, how was he better than me? Oh, he was much brighter than you, much more beautiful than you. Everything was sparkling. It was just like light emerging. He was much more powerful than you. And so this was 1961. And then November 1968. So by then she's a bit more experienced, but she was in Madhuban again. And Brahma Baba asked her to, to go again at that time. And... What had happened was for a few weeks, she had begun to have these experiences of Brahma Baba being in the subtle region. So she had begun to get quite worried because she had begun to see in advance. And when Brahma Baba asked her to go, she went and came back and Brahma Baba said, Child daughter, what did you see? Baba, I saw you. And what was that Baba like? There was no difference. Baba. They were just as I'm seeing you now, that's what I saw. And um, she said, Baba, I know you're going to go now, aren't you? So this was like October, November 68. So Baba said, your daughter... You're not to think about anything, not to say anything to anyone. But then later on, Shri Baba did say that Brahma Baba had become an angel actually six months in advance. He was just in the body. So it was an effort that Brahma Baba had made over time. He was keeping this angelic form. So in today's blessing, Baba has said to us, that an angel is someone who doesn't have connections down in this world. 
So we're going to visualize what would be your form when you're no longer connected with the body, with the past, with people, with worries, with attachments, with possessions. And you're going to keep yourself in that form in front of you as well. So let's sit comfortably. I won't play any music, but if you wish to play music on your end, you're welcome to do that. <clears throat> and of course, we always, first of all, take our attention to the center of our forehead. And we remind ourselves that we are a soul. Like I said, you forgot the contrast between the soul and the body in yesterday's one. So we remind ourselves that the human being is two parts. The human is this organism of nature, this body. It's made up of all sorts of different bacteria, all sorts of different cells, all sorts of different materials. And though they will just go back to nature. And I, the soul, am a spirit. And I'm from the soul world. I'm going to go back there. I, the soul, am comprised of the mind, the intellect, and the sun sky. The brain is like the roots of this body, the spine, the torso is like the trunk of this body. The arms and the legs are the branches of this body. The fingers and toes are the twigs of this body, of this tree of this body. But I'm taking myself into the seed form, I the soul and the seed. I, the eternal soul, in my essence, I'm comprised of three qualities. I, the soul, am love. I, the soul, am truth. I, the soul, am power. I am love, I am truth, and I am power. This is my core. Everything else is an expansion. But behind everything I do is love, truth, and power. My mind tends to stay in the expression, in the manifestation. But during this meditation, I'm taking myself into the seed, into the unmanifest. And in my core, in my essence, I am love, I am truth, and I am power. In my original state, when I first came down from the soul world, I only had one sanska. I was an ocean of love, just pure spiritual love for the souls and the whole of the world. My intellect was a golden vessel. 
It was just the embodiment of truth. No clutter, no fear, no ego. Just clarity, transparency. And the mind was a master almighty authority. The mind was powerful. My mind was a master of the world. Even nature would bend to my thoughts. And now Baba is taking me back to my original consciousness. And I take my mind up to Baba. Baba is beyond the languages of this world, and he speaks a very subtle language of silence, just very subtle thoughts. And he prefers being in the soul world because he's outside of the box that I put myself in in this world. All human souls are living in boxes, the box of their role, the box of their relationships, to be human means to be connected down here. But Shiv Baba is not connected down here. He is free. He is constantly incorporeal. And so in his company, I also become free. He is the father of the unlimited. And in his company, I feel more unlimited. And I look at Baba and I marvel. How does Baba communicate with all souls? And what a marvelous intellect he has. He can understand all souls, all children. Every soul must be talking to him in a different language. They must have different samskars, different religions, different worlds. They're observing different diets, different lifestyles. And yet, whenever they're remembering their God, actually it's Shiv Baba who's giving them sustenance through their deity form. Whatever that deity, whatever that God, whatever that saint they're remembering. Because they're his children. And he knows it's their role to be a devotee at this time. And Baba tells us, and he even tells Brahma Baba, that there's a line in the Gita, that, hey Arjun, you don't know your many birds. I come and tell you. And it's remarkable, the one who doesn't take rebirth is the one who knows our birds. And we take all these birds and we don't know ourselves. We don't know our journey. So we marvel at Baba. Baba, how do you know all of us? He knows every second of every soul's world. What a marvelous intellect the ocean of knowledge has. Even for us to remember what we did in one day is tricky. You know, we can forget what we did even this morning, you know, what we did last night. We forget what Baba said in the morning's morning. Our intellect is very limited, isn't it? And Shiv Baba's intellect can remember everyone's role right through the cycle. What an intellect. I marvel as I see Shiv Baba. Then what benevolence and skies. I was thinking this week how, Baba, you do your task through the sinners. This is your greatness, maybe one of your greatest greatnesses. You don't use pure souls. Baba says that, you know, Brahma Baba was commenting on that this week, that really, or well, last week, that really, Shababa is a diamond. He deserves to have a golden container, like a deity body. But actually, 
he comes into the Iron Age, into an Iron Age body. And he gets his task done through all of us mm -hmm. when we are at the end of our cycle. So he uses sinful souls in order to get his task done because this is his mercy. This is his compassion. This is his greatness. What benevolent sanskars he has. All the other religious fathers, they have new souls who come down with them and they establish their religion with new souls who don't have a past burden of sin. But Shambhava is the only one who establishes his religion with old souls. And that's because his sanskars of benevolence, they're on a different level. This is why the Supreme Soul is called Shiv, the benevolent one, the kind one, the compassionate. That's what Shiv means. And Shivaba, I look at your mind. You are the almighty authority. You have all the powers, all the siddhis inside of you. And we have to absorb them. We have to please you in order to gain them ourselves. So what a mind, what a silent mind as well. A mind that's never had a waste thought. Oh, and doesn't even, not even waste thought, like not even just like even a gross thought, or even a slightly extra thought. It's a very silent, Baba, you are the ocean of silence. Your mind is silent, pure and powerful. And in the company of your mind, I become peaceful. And Baba, your greatness is that despite being the almighty authority, You don't scare anyone. You, you are gone because of your restraint. You have such power that you could just dominate all of us. And you say, no, I've just come to serve you. I am your obedient servant. Every day you say namaste to the children. And instead of dominating us, you empower us, you uplift us, you make us worthy of the golden age kingdom. You don't even come and sit there on the throne yourself. That's selflessness. And it's this altruism that makes your power so empowering you are the only one who has the power to purify just by remembering you we can become pure that's how much power you have You don't create fear in any of us. Our physical fathers, teachers, and sadhgurus, in this world it's difficult without fear, otherwise we might have chaos. So our societies are a little bit based on fear. Our families a little bit based on fear. But yet, you don't create any fear. You remove fear from within us. You remove sorrow. You remove worry. And it's amazing with your support how we Brahmins are becoming fearless, worry-free, even though it's the end of the Iron Age. The time of most worry, we're becoming worry-free. That's your combined form. If we didn't have the partnership with you, we could never achieve that.
And you say to us, children, you have to follow Father Brahman. All of you must now change from humans into angels. So you signal to us to take our mind to the subtle region. And in the subtle region, we can see Babdada's angelic, powerful angelic form. Shiv Baba and Brahma Baba both sitting in the forehead as two powerful lights. But the whole body of Brahman is like a, a blessing of many lights. And we take Baba's drishti, and his drishti is very powerful, rays of light and might emerging from his eyes. And Baba has Devi Janki with him as well, in her angelic form. And Daddy Jenki and Baba, they both remind us, children, make effort with your angelic form in front of you. So maybe you haven't done this before. Maybe you have. Let's do that now. So next to Baba and Daddy, begin to visualize what your perfect angelic form will be like. Baba was explaining this morning, an angel is the stage where you have no connection with the world down here. Everything that's holding your mind down here as a human being, is not part of your angelic form. An angel is totally soul conscious and spiritual. An angel is formed of pure thought. An angel doesn't have any worldly design. An angel is a companion of God. So let's spend five minutes now looking at our angelic form and thinking about ourselves in what is our destination. This is what we got to achieve by the time we leave our bodies.
keeping this image of my angelic form next to Babdada, next to Daddy. I make a note in my mind that I need to keep returning back to this through the day again and again. Let me keep looking at Baba and let me keep looking at my angelic form. I need to extract my mind out of the day-to-day -day role as a human being and keep remembering my destination. This powerful angelic form is what the world needs. The final scenes of the Iron Age are going to be horrible down here, but there's going to be thousands of souls in their angelic form supporting everyone. So what we want is souls experiencing angelic support while things disintegrate down here. That's why Baba has this as an imperative. I think of Baba in the soul world and I thank him again. I marvel at that mind, intellect and sanskars. And I think of myself back in the throne of the forehead as the seed of this body. And I say to myself that this is the time for spiritual endeavor, for sadhana. Let me remain engaged in that. Um, Shanti. So we'll stop the meditation here. But if anyone would like to share any experiences or reflections, those of you that are with me here, you're most welcome to do so. Oh, Shanti. Visualizing myself in the Sunny Russia as an angel. Um, you know, my thoughts went to Daddy Prakash being there as well. That was the daddy, that was the other. I, I keep slipping in and out, in and out of it. Uh, back into the, the, the gross form. Uh, I was able to only hold it for a few seconds and then have to try again. But it was the feeling that it floated. Uh, those few seconds. And what also came to me is that since you ended it with um, what is needed. Just how much effort I have to make on the cell. Where I need to be, but this the experience um, made me realize that it's not all that difficult, but just I need to be constant with it. I have visualized before. Um, we we'll try visualizing this, this subtleness and angelic form. But when I'm 
in Baba sometimes in the trail or, or even in the Murray's when it says emergent angelic four. Sometimes in my day-to-day -day activities, I would say, I would see myself in front of me, step back from a few seconds and say, this is who I am. Uh, this consciousness, I am consciousness is what I have to be. But uh, I realize I have to, a lot of work to do still. I have a lot of work still to do. So, Thank you very much. Anyone else like to share? Hmm? Oh, everyone's still experiencing, probably. Rajinda, would you like to share anything? So, if we continue this practice this weekend of the Global Vati, the practice with Shri Baba is something we need to continue, as Baba is saying to us, we have to build our chant. And like Ambika Ben said, maybe... We can hold it for a few seconds and then it slips away again. That's because it's all about accumulation and we have to keep practicing, keep stretching. And the more that we accumulate our yoga power, that then naturally holds the mind also in concentration. Concentration then helps us stay in yoga through when we're performing actions as well. So the two are combined. Keeping our angelic form in front of us is something which helps us to continually come out of the day-to-day -day actions. That who am I? How does Baba see me? Baba says he keeps these angelic forms in the subtle region in front of him. He decorates the Brahmins. And pretty much every Thursday, when we have the bold messages, Baba, the transvestinger often says that I arrived in the Sato region and already there were many Brahmins already there. And so the angelic form is like your most pure form of thought. It's like a manifestation of your pure form of thought. Angels are made of pure thought. And then as we concentrate those pure thoughts, and when there's that stage of nothing other than pure thought, that's that angelic form. So that's what should be left as we go through this cleaning process. In Christianity, there was one monk from about a thousand years ago. I think maybe Shubhaba must have given him a touching or Maybe it was a Brahmin soul, who knows? Um, he wrote this hierarchy of angels. It's become very famous. And I'd come across it when I was a child in my school library, I think. And um, they talk about these different levels of angels. You can have archangels and messenger angels and different types of angels. So that's something to think about. And... The seraphim were the angels right closest to God. And you might remember we had that morning about four or five Sundays ago now. It was the morning right at the end of the 19, maybe it was April 1999 or end of March 1999. And Baba said, you're going to have to become the volcanic form of yoga. So how they show the seraphim angels is they're so close to God and God in his essence is fire. And so they reflect God's fire. So they show some angels that are like messenger angels, others that are like comforting angels, others that are guardian angels. But these ones that are the closest 
they don't go and talk or do many things directly with humanity, but they reflect God's fire, this volcanic. So when I think of myself, I think of myself like that. It reminds me, it did remind me just now, that ultimately I have to become the form of fire. The fire of yoga burns away my past burdens. So it's heat for removing the alloy, for burning away past sinful actions. But it's coolness. The fire burns cool when it is subduing the fire of the vices. It's like putting water on fire when it comes to the fire of the vices. And so that form of fire developing such powerful yoga is what the world needs because Bada is expecting us to cool down the fire of the vices, subdue it. Firstly, within ourselves, and then in the world. Um, but he's expecting us to have burnt away all of our past impurities first as well. So that was my, what I was looking at. Go ahead. I, I know you're going to record the uh, talk messages. But Sashivan's talk message was about... Uh, Screw, you know, you might remember. I don't to tighten the screw. So, do you remember that message? I'll interpret it. So, yeah, you this evening you... we'll enter, uh, interpret, shall we? We will inter interpret the whole message. Uh, uh, well, all of them, but pa uh, Pandava and with Sashi and Broughton, Baba gave, uh, you know, uh, observed that still. Our, you know, some children's thrones and stage that is, is shaking. So Baba uh, guided that check all your screws of your throne. And so he would interpret. I thought uh, this is what Baba was saying. Uh, you need to stay stable on your seat. So this evening, when you get the message, uh, you know, Perhaps you can, I thought, you know, it's good that how Baba guides us about the, how to be for the future status as well. Is that, uh, with this like, sort of yoga, stability will help to have a high status. But even before that, you know, the transformation of the self transformation will be very, won't be that easy to observe it. We, you know, the entire world will be in turmoil, people. And so we have to be prepared beforehand, uh, according to Baba Srima, make the stage. Okay, so let's stop there. Thank you very much, those of you who were here with us live. And also those of you tuning in later to YouTube, we wish you a very pleasant week and we look forward to seeing you again next time. Om Shanti. Om Shanti. Om Shanti. Om Shanti. Om Shanti. Om Shanti. Om Shanti.